Hello, and welcome to day 12 of the 40 day prosperity plan. It is day 12. So we're still in the beginning stages of this. Uh, I hope you're still following along. Even if you've had to start over again, it's fine. Like I've said, I've the first time I did this, I think I started over about three times, you know, um, doing these <laughs> really does help to keep me accountable. So me going live every day is as much for uh, me as it is, as it is for you. Uh, just a couple of quick notes. I am headed to a wonderful retreat. Uh, my friend and uh, Black Tantra Group co-founder Raziki Zafira is hosting a sacred sexuality retreat in Asheville, North Carolina, and I am so excited to attend. So I will still be going, I will still be doing my live streams, uh, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll be doing them from the mountains out in nature. So let's see, let's see what happens when um, the environment shifts, because that also can shift messaging as well. So I just want to let you all know that. Okay, statement for day 12 is the same as statement two because we're repeating the 10 statements. I lift up my mind and heart to be aware, to understand, and to know that the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. I lift up my mind and heart to be aware, to understand, and to know that the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. So I want to start out by repeating this and it's becoming as much a mantra for me as I hope it becomes for you. I am the walking embodiment of source energy. I'm the walking embodiment of unlimited abundance. And, you know, I always change it up, but I, I want you to get the basic general idea. You are the walking embodiment of abundance. I even put it in my stories. Like, it's not a thing that's out there. It's a thing that you are. It's not even so much as a thing that's in here. It's just a, it's just a thing that you are. And so this morning... I needed to do some tapping. If you don't know what tapping is, it's emotional freedom technique. It's called, we call it tapping because you're tapping different meridian lines along the body. And you do this in an effort. I'm tapping my sides now and then you go up to the head and you can do it with one hand or two. You do this whenever um, you're feeling anxiety, you're not grounded. It's a way to reset the nervous system in a, in a fairly quickly amount of time. And sometimes you have to go through a couple of rounds uh, and there's a, there's a whole process to it. If you're interested in learning more about it, DM me and I can send you some resources. Uh, so while I, I was doing the tapping this morning because I realized that there is still a part of me that is afraid for my life to be good and easy. Like th th there's, there's this messaging that is, that has been, that was, ah, I'm not going to claim it now. There's this messaging that was embedded in my body and in my mind that life is not supposed to be good and easy, that life is supposed to be struggle. Now this could be ancestral for sure. This could be very specific to, to my mother's or my grandmother's situations and circumstances. This could be a culmination of the world because, I mean, I think a lot of us get that messaging that life is not supposed to be good and easy. Life is supposed to be a struggle. It's supposed to be hard. You're supposed to have to grind. You're supposed to have to hustle. You're supposed to have to push. You have to force. That, that if your life is somehow good and easy, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. And we get into this place where we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. And so this morning... You know, I woke up, started my usual practice of listening to, to some meditative stuff because I could, and part of the reason why I have this morning practice is because sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I can feel like if I wake up smiling, I can feel my body, my body is so accustomed to being 
in this fight or flight state. It's so accustomed to being in survival mode that when I'm relaxed, my body will begin to create psychosomatic symptoms to get me into that adrenaline state. It will try and create things in my body to have me start to worry and think and create story so that I, that all that. And, and so here's what happens when we do that. All that energy, that, that abundant creative mind flow energy gets circumvented away from creation, away from, from making things. I'm getting so excited as I'm talking about this, because I'm realizing that that part of the process for this, for me, this go round is breaking through this particular piece. All of that creative energy gets siphoned over into the story because it's energy. It's the energy, the energy wants to be utilized for one thing, but if it's not, it's still energy. It's just going to go over here. So all that abundant mind of creativity, instead of creating your abundance, will create your stories of doom and gloom and all of the wrong things that are going to happen and how you have to be prepared for the inevitable and for the painful and oh my gosh and all the what ifs what ifs what ifs what ifs and so again it blocks the abundance that was the space i found myself in this morning and now I have tools, right? So I have, I have tools when I, when I see it starting to creep up and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And this is, this is why I say this is a process. This is a process. And so I use my tools. I got my, my, I listened to some Wayne uh, Dyer this morning, you know, and, and I was inspired to do some tapping. Normally I would do some meditation. I was like, no, I got to do something that hits my body. Because sometimes meditation is not enough because even in the meditation, the, the, if you're, if you're already at a certain heightened state and the adrenaline has started flowing and the cortisol is, 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 is in your body, the meditation might have those thoughts continue to go in your silence. For those of you who said, I've tried to meditate, but it makes me, it, you know, I still got the anxious thoughts. It's because now you need to get in your body. You need to shift your body to shift your mind. So by the way, if you're finding that meditation during that time as you sit and you're trying to be still, if the silence doesn't work for you, try music or binaural beats. There are tons of them on YouTube. Find the one that resonates with you. I know they all have megahertz and all that, and there are specific frequencies for things. Just find the one that resonates with you is really what's most important. It's not important that you pick a specific frequency. It's important that you listen to something and your body say yes, because that's what you need. You think you need 111 or 1111 frequency and your body's like, no, we need 432. So you pick a frequency that works, try meditating that way, right? With, with something in your ear. So headphones, earphones, if that's not working, you get up and you move, you stretch, you walk, you dance. Dancing is amazing. You tap, which is what I did this morning. Anything to get your body moving so that it shifts. And you've got to break up that energy. You have to get the energy to be doing something different. And sometimes sitting still in meditation doesn't move the energy until you can get to the point that it does. It's a process. And so this morning I knew meditation wasn't going to be it. Like I knew if I sat in meditation because it happens sometimes, there are times I can meditate and I'm lost for an hour easily. There are times I try to sit down to meditate. And as soon as I sit, my brain is already so active that for the first 10 minutes, all the thoughts are racing and they're going and they're clamoring for my attention. And sometimes I'm able to like reach that space. And sometimes I'm like, you know what? This isn't working. I need to do something different. My mind, my monkey mind is already too far gone. This morning, I already knew that my monkey mind, that's the mind that's like, bip, 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 was already too far gone. And so I did tapping. Emotional freedom technique. 
because I knew I had to touch, do something with my body. And sometimes something as simple as, and we're going to do all of this in slow. So slow is, is a three hour sensual embodiment event that I have coming up October 2nd for women. And we're going to go over these ways more in depth of getting into the body because sometimes we just want to be so spiritual and just like elevate and get away from and ascend when really what we need to do is go down deep into your body. Sometimes you need to be massaging your brush. You need to be touching the thighs. We're going to go through all of that in slow. So if you're interested in that, uh, DM me and I will send you the, the link to sign up. You can also find it on my website. And so this morning was a body thing. And so I did the tapping. I was tapping. I did like, I did one round. I, I journaled. Did another round. I journaled. I did a third round. Right? So it was a combo. This is what it means to do this work. It is, it is, it is, I, I don't like to use the word vigilant because that feels like, you know, but <laughs> sometimes there's no other way to, to, to describe it. You got to be on it. You got to be, you got to be on your mind and body and let it know who is the fucking boss. Because the world has a lot of energy that's coming at you. Your experiences have a lot of energy coming at you. The stories you were given have a lot of energy coming at you. And if you're not aware, one of those three things is going to just take, take you. And then all of your, your, your affirmations and your statements sound like words, but they haven't penetrated you. It's like oil sitting on top of water. And it doesn't get in you. And then the change doesn't happen. And the frustration builds. And why can't I? And this isn't working. And, you know, I, I don't understand. And, and all of those self-sabotaging thoughts come in. No, 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 no. That's why this is a process. So this morning, one of the things that I discovered... Cause there's always something new to discover. Right. And it's like, and you discover it in a different way. So a uh, brief backstory. I've told this story before when I was 10 years old, you know, at the start of puberty. Right. I mean, I hadn't started my menses yet, but this is like my body's getting ready. So you've got those hormones starting to starting to come into play. Right. Uh, my parents decided that I was going to switch school. So the school that I'd been in for like the past, you know, let's in second grade, second, third, fourth grade, you know, I had some friends. They decided we were going to switch. Now I'm in New York City. I'm living in Brooklyn. My school is in Brooklyn. My parents decided I'm going to go to a private school. It's on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. You know, there's a there's a lot of switch that happens. Interestingly enough, it was largely all black. So it's very interesting for a private school. Um, it's closed now. <laughs> um, so I switched schools. That's one. That's a huge change. And I switched schools after school already started. So I've got, my friends are gone. Now I'm traveling every morning an hour, like switching trains, right? Cause we're living on one line. We got to switch. That's a whole, now, now my whole morning routine is different. Right. So that's one shift that's already happening that in my 10 year old mind is a lot. And I didn't want that shift, y'all. This was not my choice. Nobody consulted me. They didn't ask me shit. Right. It's just my parents wanted something better. Second shift that happened. Mind you, this and everything I'm describing happened in a matter of about eight weeks or so, if memory serves me correctly. But memory gets funky when when it's a traumatic experience. But it feels like it was within eight, eight weeks or so. Switching to school, family gets evicted. I didn't know what eviction was. No one explained this to me. My father simply picked him up, picked us up from school one day. I woke up in my bed in the morning in my in my room with all my toys. My father picked me up with my sister and brother after school, and he said, "We're going to my mother's house. We don't live in Brooklyn anymore." No, that's it. That's it. That's it. Didn't see my toys again. Didn't see my room again. Didn't get to say goodbye to anything. You know, I, 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 
to be displaced, refugee, natural disaster, it, 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 for, for a child, your whole, it is like somebody snatched your whole life away. I'm sure for an adult too, but it's, and, and I did not realize until I was an adult, what switching schools and, and losing my home set me up for. And, and I've been working through these, that, that particular, that is a trauma that affected me more than my sexual assault. And I say that because we think that trauma affects everyone the same way. And we think that if everyone has had an experience, they must all be reacting the same. No, this, that, what happened to me at 10 was the thing that's, that stuck my body and my mind in a place that it has been taking me decades to get out of. And so this morning, as I was tapping and journaling, what I realized was that there's this, wait, let me, let me get my journal out. Cause I feel like I, cause I feel like I forgot. I'm gonna, maybe I'll read here a little bit. All right. Checking my time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing how I'm afraid to be happy and I'm afraid for life to be good and easy. I don't want the joy to be taken, snatched from me. This goes back to being evicted at 10 years old. This goes back to that moment when I felt like my life had been snatched from me, a new school and a new home. I'm going to just stop there because that kind of made me like reading that kind of like choked me up. And that means that the trauma is still there. Like the emotion is still there. You know, when you've gotten past a trauma, when you can talk about it without the emotion of it showing up. And so because I'm still working through, and I'm sharing this story with you because you have your own story, right? You have your own story. And I want to encourage you to work through your story. Woo. Because there's still this story and, and, and coupled with me living in poverty as an adult and my body being accustomed to survival. Whenever things begin to get good and easy, my mind begins to create stories around my body, my health, which snatches that creative energy. So I don't have the space to create what opens me to abundance. Does this make sense? The energy, it's like, um, it's like if you have asthma, I don't know why that came to my mind. I thought of blowing up a balloon, right? You want to blow up this balloon of joy, but your energy has to be diverted to making sure your lungs are working. And so you don't have space to blow up balloons of joy because you simply need to, cons you need to conserve your breath to just be alive. When we have these stories that run through us, it snatches the air out of our creative power. When we begin to release these stories, the energy is there because energy is not created or destroyed, right? It's there. Now the energy can like be diverted back over into your creative abundant mind, which is, that is your true nature. That is your true existence. And so now when you're in your creative, abundant mind and you are, you know that you are this walking embodiment of source energy and you are living in this joy and you know that life loves you and life is open to you. And all of a sudden, just these, these epiphanies and synchronicities begin to happen and the path opens before you and you meet people and you go to places. And then the next thing you know, this creative mind of abundance is now the flow that is perpetually creating your life constantly open 
to receiving, which means your money. But if that energy is shut down, you can't be open. You can't even see what's in front of you because you're so busy looking over your shoulder and behind you and what's going to happen in the future, you know, and I got to prepare and the what if and, and all of that. And so my stories are still stemming from, well, if my life got snatched away at 10, I got to always prepare for that. And I say was because it's my story less and less. It's the story less and less. But it's still the story that I that I know now I'm really clear that when I feel it coming up or I feel something coming, I can say, ooh, there we are. Okay. <laughs> Which tool are we pulling out today? Because that's not the path we're going down. We're staying over here in the path of a of our truth and abundance and our joy and how you know what everything's gonna work out it's gonna be fine whatever it is it's gonna be good it's gonna be good doesn't mean there's not problems in the world but it's still gonna be good i'm not bypassing i recognize that shit is happening i'm not like you know nothing's ever wrong i'm just like it's all gonna work out for my highest good because life loves me because i am walking abundance and even if something is painful it is part of my journey it is not to cut me off from my abundance it's just that i'm here to experience the fullness and that means that sometimes i'm going to experience some discomfort and some pain but it's it's still it's still okay and so that was this morning <laughs> and that is part of my process because I don't ever want you to think that I'm going to read this book and that's just going to be it. And I'm going to say these statements and that's just going to be it. No. This book and these statements are part of the process to help you open and to go, oh, I see. And to help you begin to, to shift and change your mind and the stories that are playing that keep you thinking that you are not this walking embodiment of divine abundance because you are. That is the truth. Your name, your race, your gender, your human body, we're all given to you. Your truth is that you are the walking embodiment of divine consciousness, which is infinitely abundant. Statement two, I lift up my mind and heart to be aware, to understand, and to know that the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. You lift up your mind and heart to be aware, to understand, and to know that the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all your good. And that is what you are. I will see you tomorrow for a beautiful day 13. Take care. Love you.